Ah, uh, hello there! And are you having a fun time preparing for Christmas? <laughs> oh, I am so glad to hear that. And are you taking lots of pictures to remember this grand event? Good, because it is so important to be able to record special events in the present to share with others in the future. And have you noticed that each year technology produces new cameras and new ways to record these memories? I mean, even YouTube has made advances in technology. Imagine being able to put your memories and messages on a platform where they can be seen and heard by millions of people all across the world. I've seen a lot of technological advances during my lifetime. I can remember when television came to our street on a tiny black and white screen and we all thought it was a miracle. <laughs> I remember when telephones just transmitted voices and to make a call to another country was costly and you had to book the call days in advance. <laughs> now we have these gadgets where you can make a video call in full color to someone at the other side of the world instantly. <laughs> Even in flights, I've seen technological advances from flying aeroplanes powered by propellers to flying jets at supersonic speed, and then rockets that first sent up satellites like Sputnik, and then other rockets that put men on the moon. Many of you, I suppose, weren't even born when these things took place, but there are pictures still around that recorded those events so today's generation would know that there once was a world without mobile phones and spacecraft and television. I was thinking about all of this when I came across some old pictures of Voyager 1. Have you heard of that? It was the first interstellar spacecraft to be launched and it was launched in 1977. Yeah, 1977. Did you know that during the last week of August in 1989, nearly 12 years later, that same spacecraft, Voyager 1, sent back some really breathtaking pictures of the planet Neptune and of its rings and moons. <laughs> I recall that the news media didn't give it much more time than local sports. But the pictures sent back from space to, space to Earth in those few days changed forever our concept of Neptune and its moon Triton. Hmm. Even the scientists who designed Voyager never dreamed what was going to be revealed. Now they hoped the spacecraft would work for, well, maybe five or six years. They also hoped it would fulfill its then intended mission. But then they thought it would simply lapse into silence, never to be heard of again. Hmm. But now we know its power supply will keep it operating for years and well beyond our solar system. I, I was thinking how miraculous it was when these pictures were received. You know, spacecraft Voyager's voice is not a loud one, only 21 watts. But from 5 billion kilometers in space and requiring more than four hours to reach Earth, its signal was only about one 
20 billionths of the power required to run an in ordinary electronic digital wristwatch. You know, after Voyager had been launched and was already six or seven years into its voyage, a new receiver was devised by scientists at General Electric. That receiver was hooked up to a dozen or so giant antennae near Socorro, New Mexico, linked together in a configuration that constituted an enormous signal receiving dish and it had the capability of receiving a signal from space as weak as 12 billionths of a billionth of a billionth of one watt. Hmm. Now for you mathematicians, the way to write that would be 10 to the minus 28. <laughs> yes. Now by anyone's standards, that barely qualifies as even a whisper. But because of that faint whisper, our understanding of the cosmos will never be the same. It was enough. And now there are plans to send people to Mars. And believe it or not, one day, flying between the planets of our solar system will become as commonplace as going out to the mall to do some shopping. Now that's something that you younger ones can hope for, eh? And hope is what this season we call Christmas is all about. It's hope for a better future that even if the present can seem hopeless or even desperate. Eighty years ago, beginning on the 8th of September, 1941, the Nazi armies besieged a place called Leningrad, as it was called then. And they sieged it for 900 days. Virtually every building was destroyed. People lived through bitter cold and near starvation. They slept in cellars in the shelter of destroyed walls and in shells of shattered buildings. For months they lived on nothing but a small handful of bread every day. Still, they resisted the massive power of the German army. But amazingly, in the midst of all that destruction and death, there were babies being born. Hmm. How ridiculous that seems now, doesn't it? What a world to bring a little child into. I mean, didn't those people know they were going to die? Didn't they know there was no hope? So what is the meaning of a child being born? Hmm? For destruction and death? Hmm? No, because even in the midst of that terror, there was reason to hope for life. It seems the Creator has endowed humankind with a bit of the divine nature by which hope is born again and again to bring light into the darkness of despair. Perhaps some people would argue saying, but most of those were probably non-believers, so how can you say that God was doing that? Simply because belief, or non-belief, is a perspective of humankind. The perspective of God is always the constant affirmation of life. Now, I was one of those babies born while the Germans were busy bombing. Oh, not in Leningrad, but I was born into a north of England town known for its steel mills, and hence it became a prime target for the Luftwaffe to bomb. I came into this world during an air raid, and my first view of this wonderful world 
was the inside of a bum shelter at the bottom of our garden. <laughs> I was a reason for life and hope for my family at that time. Hope that one day the bombing would end and children could play in a world at peace. Eighty years ago. You know, hope is a fundamental human strength available to everyone. And even during these times of uncertainty and adversity, hope can endure and even thrive. Every person has the capacity to hope and to hope for different things. <laughs> Some hope to win the lottery. Good luck. <laughs> Some hope to get a promotion at the office or workplace. Kids hope to pass their exams at school, while parents hope their kids will simply grow up safe. Sadly, these days, many are hoping that those in power would seek a path of peace rather than war. Others are simply hoping this COVID nonsense will end soon and that we'll be free to come and go just as we did before it all started. But I think all of us hope that babies born now and in the coming weeks and months will grow up in a better and safer world than the one we were born into. So, as you gather together as families to celebrate this season of Christmas, may I offer you my very best wishes and blessings. And as you think about the reason for this season, the birth of a child in Bethlehem, may I also encourage each of you to celebrate the wonder and miracle of life and rejoice in the hope that it brings to all of us for a better and brighter future. May I wish each and every one of you a very happy Christmas and a hope-filled New Year. As Tiny Tim says, and God bless us all, everyone. <laughs>